everyone, it is Vic with High Desert Man, and we are back for another Care to Pair. It has been a long time since episode 11. We're doing episode 12 with kind of a crazy beverage, and we're doing a double dose of Mexico today. We're doing a beverage called the Mexican Sunrise and the Tatuaje Mexican Experiment 2. Very happy to uh, be doing another Care to Pair, and I'm going to kind of get going here because my espresso is cooling off, and... Uh, so far things have been kind of a mess trying to get this set up this morning but um, all right so like I said um, first I want to give a shout out to my buddy Adam Stevens who gave me the Mexican experiment one and two this is actually the second time I've shot this video I did the whole care to pair already uh, two days ago forgot to turn on the sound forgot to turn on my mic so I got no sound so that was the Mexican experiment one Kind of screwed up my plans, but he also gave me an ME2, so I'm going to do the video again with that. So first I want to give a shout out to some new subs I've got. So I've got uh, Wesley Co, Ross Reed, Dave P, Kleinster99, and Hashimoto Sports. Very cool names, and uh, thank you everybody for, uh, for jumping in. Actually, last night I got a few new subscribers as well, and I forgot to add them to this list, so I'll, I'll get them on the next one. All right, <clears throat> the coffee. It's called a Mexican Sunrise. I've known about this beverage for a couple months now, a few months, and it, it's, it's pretty interesting. So all it is is ice, orange juice, and espresso. And... I'll talk about the uh, the coffee I'm using and all that stuff here in just a moment. But first, let's get the beverage mixed up. We're going to dump our ice in first. That's uh, uh, maybe one more. All right, we got our ice. Then you want to start with your orange juice, and you want to spill it all over yourself like I just did. It's a layered drink, so it's important to have a spoon. So first you're gonna pour your orange juice in there. And uh, I don't know how much my espresso is gonna take up. So you start with your ice, your orange juice, then you pour your espresso, and I just pulled this shot a few minutes ago, over a spoon. And since this spoon is, uh, or this cup doesn't pour well, I just spilled coffee all over my table. But here's what you end up with is a really cool layered beverage and uh, don't move it too much it'll mix in see there a nice layered beverage and uh, got my beverage ready there so <laughs> it's really cool drink and I already know what it tastes like since I shot this video once already but um, uh, so let's talk a little bit about the coffee, the, the actual coffee that I use. So it has become a new favorite of mine for espresso drinks in particular. It's, um, I, I, I bounce back and forth between a few really, really good coffees for espresso drinks. This particular one is by a company called Maramas. It's the Maramas Orphea. I'll put a picture up on the screen. I'll put a link down in the uh, description. I get my... Uh, Orphea from a place called Whole Latte Love, wholelattelove.com down in the description. <clears throat> and it's a very good price. And it is a really, really good coffee. And what I like about it, so I, I only like medium roast coffees. Dark roast to me is just a ruined coffee, a burnt coffee. There's very few companies who know how to do it well. And but why some people do like dark roast uh, typically is because you do get that heavier, darker, uh, more bitter um, element to the coffee and stuff. And the Maramas Orphea kind of compensates for that. It's a blend of Arabica beans and double wash Robusta. So if you know anything about coffee, Arabica is your more high tier stuff. Think of it as your premium hand rolled cigars. Robusta would be your bundle cigars. Maybe hand rolled, but just not the best tobaccos or whatever. Um, however, Robusta tends to be heavier in flavor. It's got more caffeine. And uh, so it's a good blend of Arabica and Robusta. And 
what you really get out of this coffee is some good chocolate notes, which is why I picked it to go with this. I don't want something that's bright and fruity and acidic because I've already got the orange juice in there. That's adding acidity as it is. So I figured the uh, chocolate notes would go really well. Now, the cigar is the Tatuaje Mexican Experiment 2. This is the regular production of the ME series. Uh, the ME series came out around 2012, I believe, as a limited edition stick. The Mexican Experiment 1 is still limited edition. It comes in um, uh, a thousand of each, uh, a thousand bundles of each size, and uh, whereas the ME2 is just a regular production. The cigars for the basic uh, blend components are the same. It's a Mexican San Andreas wrapper, Nicaraguan binder and fillers. How they differ from that, uh, don't really know. They uh, haven't really released that information. But uh, this particular one is the Churchill 6 and a half by 50, uh, 48. MSRP on this is 10 bucks. Hmm. The draw seems very, very good. It's going to be a, a good draw. I know from experience that this drink is better blended. So if you just leave it layered like this, initially what you will get is just the espresso with some more acidic notes because the orange juice mixes in with it a little bit as you take the drink. But it's a better drink if you incorporate the orange juice and the espresso. And in theory, It's a really crazy flavor. And, and this is a beverage that is very, very dependent on what espresso you use. I think you really want to go with something that is, uh, that's got, a, as a prominent or dominant uh, note, chocolate flavors. Uh, it, it just makes sense to me that that's what you're going to want. Let's get going here. Adam, thank you so much. And Adam just called me when I was on my way out here. It's so cool to make new friends through this adventure of uh, shooting videos and, and uh, doing reviews and everything. I mean, uh, Kevin and I have become good friends. Martina Maya and I, Caesar from Smoke and Lead, um, and then people that don't have channels, Adam, uh, the Walters, but you, some of you know these people, some of you don't. But it's just been so cool to uh, to make new friends and to have people that I can uh, talk with about this stuff, uh, with about the cigars and everything. All right, the cigar has a good dose of cayenne and white pepper. Uh, pretty much like the ME1. Like I said, I already did this video once and uh, screwed it up because of my sound. So uh, now I'm paranoid. Just want to make sure my sound is on. Kind of a heavy, bold spice um, or a heavy, bold uh, smoke experience. That Mexican San Andreas is, um, is true to its nature. A lot of, um, like I said, a lot of cayenne pepper, a lot of white pepper mixed in the retro hail. I'm getting a good shot of uh, wasabi in the sinuses. Um, it's, I'm getting a good mouth coating. Now, the thing that I'm not getting so much on this one that I did on the first one was cocoa notes. Let's go into the Mexican sunrise, shall we? I really, really like this drink. I think this is something, well, first off, I think this is something that I can add to my summer uh, coffee routine. A lot of people probably won't like this flavor. It is very different. You're getting the acidity from the orange juice and you can taste the separate components, but the way they integrate is is very interesting. And I'm, I'm getting those chocolatey notes. Now, this beverage, because of the orange juice and because of the, the sugars and the acidity and stuff, really kind of coats your mouth. And that probably will play quite a bit into how the experience is with this cigar. OK. 
Okay, now, now I'm picking up that dark, I wouldn't really say dark chocolate. It's more of a, it's more of a baker's cocoa, similar to what I, uh, what I get out of the Jericho Hill by Crown Heads. Kind of a, a uh, not a bitter component, but just uh, baker's cocoa. It has the cocoa flavor, um, but because it's unsweetened, it's, it's typically bitter. Really, really good. It's cutting through that coating of the Mexican Sunrise. Cool. Very cool. Alright guys, I'm going to uh, smoke on this for a little while. I'm uh, finishing up a project. I, I did two custom smoke chests for John Huber and Mike Condor at Crown Heads. Uh, I reached out to John last night and said, Hey John, I need a shipping address. He doesn't know I'm sending these. I'm just doing it as a thank you because uh, this year they were really, really good to High Desert Man. And, uh, you know, they they helped us do that big giveaway at the 500 subscriber mark. Um, John has since sent me some other stuff. He sent me a, a five-pack of the La Coalition after he saw my review on that. And so just as a thank you, I wanted to do uh, something special for them and uh, get those off to them. So I'm going to finish those up. And uh, we'll see you guys here in just a little bit. Stick around. We are back. Got just a little bit left of my uh, Mexican Sunrise here. Oh, it's a really, really good beverage. And I, like I said, it is it is very dependent on the coffee that you use um, to make it up. Because I, I really think the best way for this beverage is to use a coffee that's got some heavy chocolate notes and stuff, which I did. And I'm really glad that I ended up having to do this video again because the ME2, in my opinion, is far superior to the ME1. This cigar held its held its own throughout the ME1, uh, throughout the experience, whereas the ME1 really... It, it, I was able to get some good flavors out of it and stuff, but overall it just wasn't that great of a cigar. This one is a good representation of Mexican San Andreas. It's got the good spice in the nose. It's got the good, rich earth flavors. Um, it cut the coating in my mouth of the orange juice and, and espresso very well. Good cocoa flavors in this one. And the cocoa flavors go very well with the Mexican Sunrise beverage. So I'm going to go back to my notes here for a minute. Now my notes were actually on the, the ME1 when I first did uh, this video two days ago, uh, but I, I modified them a little bit for this cigar. <clears throat> so in the ME1, the cocoa notes uh, started out pretty heavy at the beginning of the cigar for like the first three quarters of an inch. In this one, it took a little bit longer for those cocoa notes to come out and, and get going but they lasted, they sustained through the cigar way better than they did <clears throat> in the ME1. It's got a smooth retro hail, just a little bit of white pepper in the nose, um, less pepper than the ME1 had, and it's, it gives you a little bit of a bite in the nose, but not very much at all. So it's got uh, some cayenne pepper, white pepper. Once in a while, transitions to a little bit of black pepper notes. Um, that cocoa is in there. It's got some just some good, earthy, rich uh, flavors. Ah. 
Okay, the coffee with this cigar is excellent. It is excellent. First off, I think that this is going to become a new regular beverage for me in the summertime. It's it's just a weird drink. It's and I, like I said, I definitely think this is a, a drink that people are either going to love or hate. I, I don't think there's any middle of the road for this drink because it, it's a weird drink. But it's really good. I want to show you guys something. And I think I'm safe to show this on camera because um, John Huber from Crown Heads doesn't really... He, he watches my channel when I tell him I've done a... Uh, I've done a uh, Crown Heads review and stuff, but I don't think he goes and regularly checks my channel or anything. So I made two custom smoke chests for Mike Condor and John Huber. And um, I'm going to send these out this week. But this, uh, I think I already mentioned, this is just kind of a thank you to them for uh, being so cool to High Desert Man this year and helping us with our 500 subscriber giveaway and stuff. So the first one, they're both a crown, crown Heads themed uh, box, but I did them a little bit different just to make them, you know, different. And they really came out nice. I'm really happy with how they turned out. The When I poured the epoxy last night over the bands, um, I was a little bit worried because I don't know if it was the temperature or if I just stirred more vigorously than I normally do, but the, I seem to get a lot more bubbles in the epoxy last night than I have in the past. And so I poured it, I let them sit for about 10 minutes and, and the bubbles formed up along the edges of the, of the pockets and stuff. And then I just took my heat gun and, and put the heat gun in there for just a second and the bubbles popped and everything came out real nice. I don't have a single bubble in the epoxy at all. I'm super excited to get these out to, to the boys as uh, just a little bit of a thank you for supporting High Desert Man and helping us out this year. That was, that company is so generous and, um, and just more reason that they are are my favorite company. I, I really love Crown Heads. There you go, guys. This has been Care to Pair episode 12, Mexican Sunrise, a double dose of Mexico with the Mexican Experiment 2 cigar from Tatuaje. And um, check out highdesertman.com for the smoke chest and for uh, other beard care and, and different cigar accessories that we have there. We don't have a lot, we're still working on, on more stuff, but uh, we've got some really, really nice humidors, guys. Heritage humidors, go check those out. There's some really unique uh, features to our humidors that other humidors on the market don't have. <clears throat> um, and please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Like, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Stay rugged.